All right, question number one. They're saying that you have to prove this equation. So you start off with Fg provides Fc, which is force of gravitation provides a centripetal force. So force of gravitation is equals to Fc, GMM over R squared is equals to Mv squared over R, and you prove this relationship. Then they ask you to find what is the total kinetic energy and what's the total potential energy. The kinetic energy is half Mv squared, and you already proved your speed as square root of GM over R. So you just plug that in and you get GM over 2R and gravitational potential energy ka formula apne yaad karna hai, which is minus GMM over R. Next, they ask you to find the total energy. Total energy is kinetic energy plus gravitational potential energy. Kinetic energy is GMM over 2R. Gravitational potential energy is minus GMM over R. And then you take the LCM. When you take the LCM, you get 2R and in the numerator you'll get minus GMM. And the total energy would therefore be minus GMM over 2R. Now, in part C, they say the total energy of the satellite decreases. Same explain what happens to the radius of the orbit and the speed of the orbit. Now, you need to understand this, that let's say this is the planet, right? And you're in this orbit, orbit 1. In orbit 1 versus orbit 2. Orbit 1, which your total energy is because you are at a greater height so your total energy would be more. Now, if you lose energy, remember, you will fall back in. Why will you fall back in? Because the planet is going to pull you in towards itself. So your total energy, when it decreases, when your total energy decreases, you fall into a lower orbit. First of all, if you turn off the engine, then you will fall the because the planet is already running away. So if you have energy, you will keep on going away. But if you switch off your engines and if you lose energy, you will just fall back inwards. So when you, with your total energy decreasing, remember that the radius of the orbit was first R1, now it's R2, so the radius of the orbit decreases. Next, what will happen? So in the first part, they were saying since total energy decreases, minus GMM over 2R, which is your total energy, it becomes more negative. More negative ka matlab ye ke wo andar ki taraf hai, which means R decreases. What is happening to the linear speed of the satellite? Now, you know kinetic energy ka equation tha GMM over 2R, and you could clearly see that the radius has fallen because you're going inwards. So R decreases, kinetic energy increases. As a result, your speed will increase. Now in question number two, they're saying state the number of oscillations made by the piston. This is the piston. State the number of oscillations made by the piston in one complete rotation of the wheel. So when this wheel is completely going, this piston goes down first, if, it, if you're over here. Then it comes back up. Then it goes further up. And then it comes back down to start the oscillation. So, ek rotation of the wheel may aapka piston be ek rotation complete karta hai. Alright, so when this part goes down, this goes down, when this goes up, this goes up, it goes further up and back like this. Now, next part, what is the frequency? Frequency ke liye unhoon aapko bata diya, you have 200 evolutions per minute. So, usko per second mana de, 40 is the answer and you do not need to write hertz with it the reason is that hertz is already printed so let me remove it next part amplitude is given and then what you find maximum values maximum speed ka formula omega a omega is 2 pi f frequency you found out to be 40 and the amplitude is 42 milli to convert into meters and you get 10.6 meters per second then the acceleration which is omega squared a Omega is 2 pi f whole square into the amplitude and your answer should be 2650 after rounding it off. Part C, what is the maximum speed label a position for the pivot? So this is your pivot P, and you have to label its position. So maximum speed is mean position. So you could write S over here, you could write S over here, but don't write it anywhere else. Because this is the center of the rotation and you can see that the wheel is spinning about this point so this is going to be the central line so either write s over here or write s over there and then what is the maximum acceleration maximum acceleration is always at the peak position so 
the amplitude of your oscillation would be over here. So straight line through the center, either right A over here or A over here would not make any difference. Okay, so for question number three, they've given you this expression, m is equals to minus 2kx, and they want you to find what is the frequency, or they want you to prove that the frequency is 8 hertz. So first thing is you compare it with the equation for SHM, the general equation, which is minus omega square x, so up m goes side below. You write acceleration is equals to minus 2k over m into x, compare it with acceleration equals minus omega square x, now omega square and 2k over m must be equal, so omega should be equal to square root of 2k over m. Now the spring constant was 3 newtons per centimeter converted to meters, so you'll get 300 newtons per meter. Mass was in grams, converted to kgs, plug the values in, you get 50. Put the 50 over here, 50 is equal to 2 pi f, frequency will be 7.95 or 8 hertz. In the next part, they're saying, what is this phenomenon? Well, whenever they give you an amplitude frequency curve, the phenomenon is always resonance and the frequency f0 at which the maximum amplitude occurs should be equal to the frequency of the system, which is 8 hertz. Next, suggest and explain how the apparatus could be modified to make the peak flatter without significantly changing the frequency at which the peak occurs. So that means if you don't want to change the frequency at which the peak occurs, you cannot change k or m. If you change k or m, ki value change karoge, the frequency is the first peak, change. Ho so, without changing k or m, what should you do? You should increase the degree of damping by immersing the system in a fluid. In the spring system, you can fluid in a fluid. The degree of damping will come, and k or m will not change, so fundamental frequency will not change the frequency. Next, define electric potential at a point. The work done in moving a unit positive charge from infinity to a point in an electric field. Now they have given you a potential distance graph and they're asking you to value effects at which the potential is zero. So you can see that the potential is zero at this point. Now, at this point, the distance is 18 centimeters and the distance is being measured from A. So, up A se 18 centimeters dur aage ho, iska matlab ye hai ki aap B se kitna dur hai? Aap B se 12 centimeters dur hai, right? So, Use your answers to determine the charge at B. So at this point, the total potential is zero. So VA plus VB is equal to zero at this point. Not everywhere, just at this particular point. So if I want to add more detail, I can say at X is equal to 18 centimeters. Vaisa aapne upar likha hai, 18 centimeters of potential zero. Hai. So 18, at X equals to 18, VA plus VB must be equal to zero. So VA, which is KQ over RA, VB, which is KQ over RB is equal to zero. K is a constant and common in both, take it out, divide by zero, so you'll get QA over RA plus QB over RB is equal to zero. Now charge A is 3.6 in tensor minus nine, so you put 3.6 in tensor minus nine, right? Next, let me zoom in. Next what you do is, you cross multiply by taking QB to this side. So it'll become minus QB over 12. Then you cross multiply, so 12, into 3.6 into 10 to the minus 9 with a minus sign, divide by 18, and the charge will be minus 2.4 into 10 to the minus 9. A small test charge is now moved along the line AB. Stay at which point would, should the force be maximum? Well, let me zoom out, show you the graph. Dekhe, potential distance graph ka jo gradient hota, the gradient of this graph gives you force. So at this point versus at this point, where do you think is the line steeper? over here, right? So the gradient gives you electric field strength, all right? And the electric field strength is proportional to force. So get a force ka maximum hogi. Force wa maximum hogi jahan pe gradient maximum hoga, right? So therefore, the answer is x is equals to 27 kuper. The force will be maximum. Now let me show you the answer. So the negative gradient of the graph, negative ka sign hum dalte negative gradient of the graph gives you the electric field strength. Gradient is maximum at x equals 27. Since electric field strength is proportional to force, therefore the force is maximum at x is equals to 27 centimeters. All right, so I want you to underline that this coil has 140 turns of wire. The sides are of length 4.5 centimeters and 2.8 centimeters. The coil is held between poles of a magnet. The magnet produces uniform flux density. When the current is 170, the maximum torque produced is 2.1 in tensor minus 3. Now you know that the torque will cause this rectangular coil to spin 
let's say the forces are in this direction and these are forces which are equal and opposite so they constitute a couple and you know that the moment due to a couple is always any single force times the perpendicular distance perpendicular distance between the forces all right make sure that you do not forget perpendicular so if you find out either this force or this force koi si bhi ek force nikal lo aur usko distance 2.8 cm se multiply karo to aapke paas moment aa jana chahiye aur usne aapko bataya hua hai that the maximum torque produced is 2.1 in 10 to minus 3 usne moment aapko bataya hua hai so you can say 2.1 into 10 is per minus 3 is equals to f into 2.8 in times minus 2 and from here you can find out what the single force f was ab sabse pehli cheez kehta hai uh, for the coil in the position for maximum torque this is the position for maximum torque explain whether the plane of the coil this is the plane of the coil so is this plane i'm moving my hand on the plane of the coil is my plane parallel or perpendicular to the magnetic field this is the direction of the magnetic field मतलब या यूं होगा या यूं होगा हम जूम करते हैं यूं है और प्लेन ऑफ द कॉल यूं है सो इट्स पैरल बिकॉज इट्स हॉरिजॉन्टल और राइट नेक्स्ट पार्ट सेज दैट फॉर द कॉल इन द मैक्सिम पोजिशन कैलकुलेट द मैन ऑफ द फोर्स सो मोमेंट इज इक्वल टू फोर्स इन डिस्टेंस एंड द फोर्स टर्न आउट बी पॉइंट जीरो सेवन फाइव Next, what is the force on side BC of the coil? Well, side BC of the coil will experience no force because that side is parallel to the field. Side को perpendicular होना चाहिए. So this is north, this is south, and this is your coil, right? Your side, which is this side, should be perpendicular to the field. So ये side A B C D. This side right now is parallel to the field, therefore it experiences no force. Usse ka show that the flux density between the poles is 70 milli teslas. So force was 0.075 into B into I into L into number of turns. Number of turns I made you underline the question because this is not just one coil. There are multiple. In fact, there are 140 turns like these. So force is equal to B into I into L. into n and from there you get your b as 0.0700 which is 70 milli teslas next part says state faraday's law of electromagnetic induction well emf induces directly proportional rate of change of flux and emf is n delta phi by delta t i should write an n over here um because i've got more than one turn and then the formula will be nb over t number of turns are 140 flux density is 70 milli teslas as we found out earlier area of the coil area of the coil was length into the width centimeters ko meters mein convert kiya divided by the time 0.14 and you get 0.088 volts question number 6 what is the fundamental property of the charge that the charge is quantized the charge on electron is always quantized next two parallel metal plates p and q are situated in a vacuum the plates are horizontal and separated by distance sabse pehla part why should the plates be parallel and horizontal parallel because you want to produce a uniform electric field between the two plates horizontal isliye kyunki aap chahte hain ki aapka jo charged point hai ya jo bhi ye charge hai ye stationary rahe you want it to remain stationary अब वो स्टेशनरी कैसे रह सकता है इफ इट्स वेट इज पुलिंग इट डाउन देर मस्ट बी अ फोर्स विच इज अपर्ड एंड दैट फोर्स हैज टू बी इलेक्ट्रिक सो सो द पर्पज ऑफ द हॉर्जोंटल प्लेट इज टू क्रिएट अ वर्टिकल इलेक्ट्रिक फोर्स और अ वर्टिकल फील्ड विच बैलेंस इज द वेट द कैलकुलेट द चार्ज सो एफ ई एंड वेट मस्ट बी इक्वल सो एफ ई इज इक्वल टू डब्ल्यू एंड यू नो एफ ई इज क्यू ई एंड डब्ल्यू इज एम जी so your charge would be m into g over e now how do we find e e is potential difference over distance 850 over 5.4 times minus 3 1.5 and 10 to power 5 plug that here m or g ki value dale and the charge should be 4.8 into 10 to power minus 
the procedure was repeated for three further oil droplets and you found the charges to be 3.2, 6.4, 3.2. They're all multiples of 1.6, right? So they're all multiples of 1.6, which means the fundamental charge was 1.6 into 10 to the minus 19. That's exactly what they were asking you to find as well.